Top of the morning to you, my good fellows. Welcome to episode 6 of the Painting Ukraine. Once again, it's me, your lovely and beautiful host, Isaac Tretto, here to give you the latest news and crazes going around in this insane war in Ukraine. Now, it is a beautiful, crisp autumn day on this 11th of October, 2022. It's a wonderful day to be alive, it's a wonderful day to be breathing the breath of God, and to be telling you so many amazing things. So, I mean, yeah, I'm just so excited again to be here because, let me tell you, this is one of the highlights of my week doing this podcast. I love talking with all of you, speaking with all of you, and showing you all the crazes and all what's new, because, let me tell you something, I may learn a lot more than you do as a surprise, because, ladies and gentlemen, the stuff that I have to do in order to put together this podcast is insane. I have to do hours and hours of extensive research so that I can make sure that I'm giving you, my listeners, the correct information. So this is just a little advisory from me. If I say something, do keep in mind that it has been checked many, many times. So if I am wrong, do feel free to correct me because I may be incorrect in all my knowledge. Another thing, when you do something, it, it, be it for research, information, to share news, always be sure that you're doing as much research as possible because little knowledge is very dangerous. In fact, more dangerous than Putin's weapons. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, I believe that it's time we get started. So without any further ado, let's get in with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you once again for giving me six wonderful episodes of this podcast, Lord. As I continue to do my work today and into the future, I pray that many, many more will hear my voice and hear you through my voice, Lord. May I be your vessel, and may I be the rock on which you can create many, many new things from. It is in your holy and righteous name I pray. Amen. Now, before I kind of jumpstart with everything, I'd like to give everybody a quick little, I guess you could say, TLDR of a new feature that I'm going to be adding to this podcast. So for the past five episodes, I have affectionately referred to you, the listeners, as ladies and gentlemen. And I've been noticing that I've been doing this quite frequently and a bit too much, and it's taking too much time away from my main points. So, ladies and gentlemen, I shall now refer to you as other things, such as listeners or good fellows, or, you know, I'm just not going to be doing it as often because... You, you gotta fix even the little mistakes like that. So, yeah, I guess. Don't feel offended or don't feel left out if I don't mention you properly or refer to you properly. Just understand I'm trying to make the best of my time. Well, that's it. Let's get started. So, to begin, let's start with some wonderful news out of occupied Crimea. Now, to the east of occupied Crimea, in fact, the most eastern point of this peninsula, lies Kirch. Kirch is a small coastal city known for its beach, beach towns, rail ports, and airport. All very, very beautiful things. I've never seen it, but these pictures are amazing. In fact, I'm going to pull up a picture of the Kirch Bridge, the signature, I guess you could say, attraction of this area. But this Kirch Bridge is what we're going to be focusing on today because the Kirch Bridge connects the city and the rest of Crimea to mainland Russia. And in the recent weeks and months of this war, it has been Russia's number one supply chain. But this has been a devastating blow to Russia as the bridge has been blown up. This once towering symbol of Russia's oppression now lies in ruins deep below the ocean. Now, let me give you a quick synopsis of how this bridge blew up. So the Russians were transferring oil and explosives across the bridge when all of a sudden one of the triggers came loose and boom, there goes the train. Now, this train had stretched across the vastness of the bridge, the entire bridge. In fact, not one part was left out of the bridge because this train, like most trains in this area, don't have the same regulations as the U.S., and they can be much longer than they are in here. So the entire train was blown to smithereens and took the, the bridge with them. So fortunately, there were no casualties, yet the amount of casualties that will not occur because of this one incident is insane. Thousands upon thousands of Russian and Ukrainian lives will be saved due to the lack of proper materials. So, this is wonderful news out of the bridge. And, you know, this is just a warning. Always make sure that you can properly check anything you're transporting. Be it a car or a train or as big as a plane. Because, now, like, for instance, this is why we have such extensive security measures at airports. Because we don't want planes blowing up or being flown into buildings. Russia 
should have done something like that in which they exercise more security and exercise better caution so an event like this could not happen. But obviously, folks, no action goes without its rewards. Or, for our case, misfortune. Now, you may have remembered in the earlier parts of the war, Russia heavily missiled and shelled parts of the country that they never planned on invading with the boots. Or, as you can say, an on or boots on ground invasion. But, recently, Russia has released a fresh wave of missiles on many cities across Ukraine. I'm going to read you the list right now. So, these lists of cities include Kiev, Kharkiv, Izum, um, Luhansk, which is surprisingly a Russian city, so that doesn't make much sense, Dnipro, Zaporizhia, Lviv, I think this is, yeah, Sumoy, Mykolaiv, and Kherson. All of these cities have been hit by Russian missiles in the recent days in response to the destruction of the Hirch Bridge. Now, this is obviously very devastating to the civilians, and you may have remembered from the first part of the war that when these shells of rockets came, many lives were lost. And these shells are a very common way of terrorism. I'm not going to lie to you, it's terrorism, because we've seen it in Israel, in Iraq, and even in parts of China in the early 20th century. These missile shellings are aimed at only one purpose, and that's at harming civilians. And one of the major rules of war is to never harm civilians. So this is clearly a sign that Russia is a terrorist state. It doesn't matter that you lost a bridge that had been used as a weapon. You lose a weapon. That's natural in wars. You don't go and you kill civilians. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you may be wondering, what can we do in response to all these horrible attacks? And the best we can do is to pray, pray, and pray. Prayer is stronger than any missile Putin can send at any city. Prayer is stronger than any military or any force against this word in the world. Because the word of the Lord God is the best and strongest weapon we got. With that concluded, I believe it's time we take a little break and go to my favorite part of our weekly podcast. Oh yeah, I think you know it. I know it. Let's just cut to the chase. It's time for the... Heimer's mention. Yeah, I'm not going to scream this time. I don't want to burst your eardrums. But... Let me tell you, this one is actually kind of funny, funnier than some of my other ones. But so for today's Heimer's mention, I'd like to let you know that in southern Ukraine, where the Kherson counteroffensive is going on, Ukraine has been using wooden Heimer's to distract the Russians. So like, you know how when you go to a movie or like when they film a movie or a play, they have wooden cutouts to look like props and such just to scare people or like, you know, like to add to the scenes. Ukraine is now doing this with the Heimers, just to get the kick out of the Russians and to make them think, Heimer, boom, 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 and they can take out probably the strongest weapon Ukraine has. So, I mean, this is funny. This is a waste of Russia's munitions on props. Now, here's what I think about this whole thing. President Zelensky is an actor, so he's going to make this war kind of like another play for him. This is just another scene in the big old play of the Russia-Ukraine war, and let me tell you, it's quite a funny one. (laughs) Hooray for the Heimers. All right, Heimers break is over. Back to work, maggot. (laughs) Sorry, I don't mean to call you all maggots. Anyway, Belarus, the other neighboring nation of Ukraine who is for Russia, has confirmed that no, there will not be a Belarusian attack. Now, for those of you who are unaware, in the past week or so, Many troops have been gathering on the Belarus-Russia border for what is assumed to be training exercises. Now, many Ukrainian soldiers and parts of the military feared that this was a sign of Belarusian intervention in the war. But Vladimir Putin sat down with President Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus and said not to worry. Belarusian men of arms need not be involved in Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. So this is partially... We can be relieved about this, but in the other sense, we should be very concerned that this is the will of the Belarusian government. But, folks, do be advised that this is just the Belarusian government who feels this way, and many people in Belarus do not feel the same as their government. In fact, like I mentioned last time in Iran, 
Many people are protesting against the government in Belarus, but unlike Iran, they are not as successful, unfortunately, because the media crackdown there is very, very poor. In fact, if this podcast has even got out of this country of the United States, I doubt that it could ever reach Belarus, even if everyone in the world could hear it because of how bad the media crackdown is. In fact, if I read this report from Wikipedia, it says here that Belarus on the Press Freedom Index ranks at about 0.5. Now, this is done out of, I believe, 5 to 0, where the lowest being 0 and the highest being 5. So Belarus is at 0.5, meaning it's one of the lowest in the world. For those of you concerned, the lowest is North Korea, which is expected. <laughs> How funny that I start off, finish with North Korea, because that will start off exactly what I'm going to jump into next, folks. So... Anyway, North Korea has recently launched a missile over the Sea of Japan, their longest-range missile attack since. Now, it's not really an attack. It's more of a test. But, I mean, if you're a fish in the Sea of Japan and you just see a giant nuclear weapon heading towards you, you may be freaking out, right? Well, yeah. Anyway, fish lives matter, but let's not talk about the fish here. Let's talk about the fact that this is a Russian-given missile. Now, yeah, it may seem funny because we know North Korea for being very self-dependent, but they actually bought this missile from Russia to kind of test. And now Russia can use this information to see very well. It worked in North Korea. Now it's going to work in Ukraine. So with that in mind, I believe now it may be possible that the Russian missile range can be extended another 400 kilometers, now reaching into southern Poland. This is the longest it has ever been. Well, for reference, I'll give you an example. About two years ago before this war started, Russian missile range from the border with Ukraine extended nothing past Kyiv. In fact, Kyiv was right at the borderline. But now, with the missile ranges, it can reach about southern Poland, which is dangerous. In fact, extremely dangerous. Because as I'm sure many people have heard in the news, Poland is part of NATO. And for hundreds of years now, Poles have been wanting their revenge on Russians. So I, I've heard of myself from some people that I know who are Polish. They're saying, so long as a Russian can drop their cigarette on our border, we shall declare war. Now, I'm kind of scared about this. I understand how riled up these Polish people are about it, but, I mean, you can't want to go to war. War is one of the most unadmirable things that exist. So to want to go to war is clearly a sign that you're angry. And here's my message to my Polish friends. Polish friends, I agree with you, and I understand your sympathy and your anger. But understand, it is not that anger that needs to be taken out. Instead, go out and tell your story. Go out and tell how many people throughout the centuries have fought for the freedom of the Polish people. And go out and fight with your words, for the pen is mightier than the sword. Let them hear you, folks. Let them go out and know who you are and where you stand. The end. Ha! <laughs> I mean, that's my spiel about Poland. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's time I conclude today's podcast. Now, you know I love to end with a little bit of a devotional and some spiritual time with you. So let's go ahead and start with that. In the same way, I'm going to use a bit of an analogy here, but in the same way of how the Russian military relied so heavily on the Kerch Bridge to fund their endeavors, in the same way we rely on Christ to fund our everyday lives. Because now that Russia lacks the bridge, they lack any true way to support their troops in Ukraine. In the same way, when we lack Christ in our lives, we lack the backbone of our being. As a fish requires water, for instance, like, let's look in creation. When God wanted to make the fish, he said to the water that you shall dwell with the fish. When he wanted to make the birds, he created the sky and gave dominion to the birds over the sky. And when he wanted to create the trees and the animals and the foxes and the bears, he said to the land, I shall subdue you that you may be dependent on these animals. In the same way, we as humans have our natural habitat. No, it's not Poland. It's not Europe. It's God. God is our natural habitat, as the fish relies in water, the bird in the sky, and the animals on the land. Our natural habitat is God. We simply cannot exist without God. God is a necessary tool to all our questions. Now, 
I'm not saying here if you're taking a math quiz, by the way, love you, Miss Sumler, you should just answer Jesus if you don't know the answer. What I'm telling you to do is that you need to give God the absolute priority to everything in your life. If you are questioning whether this is good or not, just think, does this apply to God's word? And does God, God's word agree with this? If it does not, then unfortunately it is not of God. So I just want you all to check your hearts and examine yourselves as you realize, are you truly dependent on God? And if you are, are you depending on him the right way? Do you see him as just some celestial old genie who you submit your wishes to and you just get it to? Or do you see him as a loving father who cares for you and actively wants a good relationship with you? I want you all to check your hearts and I want you all to take everything I say seriously because believe me, if there's one thing that I have as my goal for this podcast, it's to see that all my listeners who are not Christians turn to Christ and all my listeners who are Christians further strengthen themselves in knowledge that they may do as I do in spreading the good word of Christ even in horrible circumstances such as this. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to close with a prayer. Ah, I said ladies and gentlemen, but don't fret. I'll slowly get out of it. Remember, just like a bad habit, it takes time. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for making all things new and giving me once again a fresh audience with fresh ears and fresh minds that they may hear what I have to say and see your word through what I say, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for giving me these good 17 minutes to talk and just... Let people hear my voice and see what I have to say, Lord. I pray that you may bless all my listeners throughout their day and that they may go forth and tell of the great news of God. And if they have not heard of the great news of God, that they may open their ears and their mouths to see and that they may know what it is that is true and what is good of you, Lord. I thank you for blessing me with such a wonderful talent of speech. And I thank you for giving me such a good medium to give this through so that people may hear my voice. And it is in your holy name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> well then, folks, I think that's it for today. I hope you really enjoyed. Have a God-fearing, wonderful, holy, sanctified day. And I'm your host, Isaac Tredo. And remember, the one best phrase to say to a Ukrainian, because it's not the only true phrase, Slava Ukraini. Goodbye. <laughs>